Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about Shadows of Change once again as we do need to talk about the possible Cafean side. So this is going to be quite interesting as, like Kislev, we know next to nothing about Grand Cafe. But we do have some hints here and there. We do know about missing dragon children. We know about the Monkey King. It's one of these things where I don't know what's going to happen. However, educated guesses can be made. The fact is, we know that Cafe's book is rather large. I imagine that Cafe's army book is going to be one of the largest that we'll see in Warhammer the Old World, as it was kind of hinted at that through interviews and so on. So, yeah, we just have to wait. However, there's a few things to discuss, because in Total War Warhammer 3, we know that they are the next DLC. Before anything, we need to talk about one thing. Creative Assembly did release a little blog on Steam, which uh, wasn't released anywhere else as far as I'm aware, but there's a little detail regarding Shadows of Change. Our fourth official DLC explores the ongoing story of three races. Zinch, Cafe, and Kislev. So ongoing story is going to be quite interesting, considering the fact that, well, Kislev, as far as we are aware, the story is done. Spoiler alert in case you haven't played the main storyline, but uh, we know now that um, Urson was saved and all sorted there, right? However, we do know that Kislev and Cafe are kind of attached to each other in terms of story. With Zinch, well, the story went towards the whole Godblood situation with the advisor and so on, but we know that the canon ending is for Kislev. With Cafe, we know once again canon ending was Kislev, but we did find out that a missing dragon child, Shen Zhu, is in Norska. We don't know exactly what's going on. Apparently, Ursin had witnessed her fate, but Ursin wasn't really too clear on the situation. What we do know is that Shenzu is the youngest sister of the family, and uh, she's like the light bringer and hope bringer for the Cafe and Dragons. It could be that the DLC will focus on Kislev and Cafe working together to find Shenzu and Zinch stealing her away, as obviously she'd be vulnerable, and this is something that Zinch would actually do. But we know that there's a lot of different things happening in Grand Cafe, for example, the Fire Dragon, the Monkey King, and so on. So only really time will tell, but there are a few things to obviously go over, as we do know some things about Grand Cafe. One thing I will want to note before we move on from the Shenzhou situation is maybe she could be a surprise FLC Legendary Lord, as I fall to the theory that she should have been a FLC character when it came to Total War Warhammer Free's release. We got Boris, who we rescued, and it feels, at least I feel, that they were kind of gearing up to do the same for Grand Cafe. So maybe she was almost complete by the time that the release happened and they decided to change the story around. It's definitely a character that we could see in the future, maybe even as a legendary hero, but I very much doubt it. Because, uh, you know, it's a cafe and dragon, there are very little of them and they're supposed to be quite important. So Cafe right now is fine in certain places, not everywhere. Let's be honest here, mechanically they're fine. I imagine that the grand majority of the attention is going to go to fixing up Kislev, then to Zinch, then to Cafe, as you've got the yin and yang stuff, that works as intended, everything works really well. Uh, pretty much anything mechanically is fine. I think the biggest issue with Cafe is the roster. As you can see here, it is very, very small. Again, something that we're told is that Cafe is one of the most diverse countries in the world. They've got loads of things going for them. And um, it's a bit of a shame where everything is kind of bare. Now, I imagine that things will vary depending on what dragon or what legendary character gets introduced into the story as that would then drastically add in new units, as we know there's certain things for certain locations. The way I see it is there's two possible legendary lords that could happen for Cafe in this DLC, mostly because they're very anticipated characters. One would be the Monkey King, and the other would be Li Dao, the Fire Dragon. And the way I see it happening is they would have very drastically different troops depending on who is picked. We'll start off with Li Dao. He is the Fire Dragon and the ruler of Southern Cafe. Or better yet said, Prefects, because really the rulers are the Dragon Emperor and the Dragon Empress. 
But we know he keeps those areas secure against the uh, assaults from Ind and the Naga of Koresh. He is slightly jealous of Miao Yin, considering that she is always at the forefront of battle, so she gets the most glory, and that he has a bit of a disdain for the Monkey King, who lives in the southern reaches of Grand Cafe because of the Mountains of Heaven, but they will ally up every now and then because it just makes sense. Both of them have interest in Grand Cafe, we just don't know exactly what the Monkey King exactly once, really. The character has the title of the Master of the Burning Winds and Lord of the Phoenix, so we can kinda expect him to have some sort of fire magic, which would start adding in some new laws of magic towards the uh, Cafe Infection. Right now we have access to the Law of Ying and Yang in Lord form, and the Law of Metal, and the Law of Light for hero options. So having some other laws of magic will obviously be very useful. The Law of Fire is also quite strong right now, but we'll get to that a little bit later. The most important thing is yeah, I know the southern areas of Grand Cafe are pretty safe, and there's not a lot of enemies, and I don't imagine that uh, you know, Ind and Koresh will open up anytime soon. I imagine that's going to be later down the line. So what could happen is, is this character could start somewhere else and have a confederation mechanic, very similar to Lokia or Rakoff, to take the southern provinces. This would be great, considering then he could start anywhere as he's going out on a special mission, possibly to rescue Shenzhou, and it would allow for... A different start. Let's be honest, Grand Cafe is rather large, but it would feel very, very much the same until the southern uh, nations got opened up a little bit more. We know this DLC will come with a legendary hero, and it's very likely that the FLC legendary hero is going to be for Zinch, so the paid for one could either be for Cafe or Kislev. When it comes to Grand Cafe, it would be rather interesting if they brought in a Lubu type character, someone who's very strong at melee, as right now Cafe kind of lacks melee heroes. And it would be great to have something that could do a lot of damage. We already have a lot of spellcaster types, so, you know, someone who could boost up an army, focusing on the melee stuff, focusing possibly on cavalry, and just being able to be an absolute terror on the battlefield. There are so many horrors within Grand Cafe, this would help everyone out. There's a few different types of characters that they could easily do. They could do some sort of monk, an engineer character, and so on, but I really do think a melee legendary hero is going to be very good for Cafe. They do need a little bit more melee strength, at least in my opinion, especially once you're dealing with, you know, Lokia, the ogres, everything in Grand Cafe. There's so many hostile factions there. So with that, you'd want to bring some expert fighter out to be able to, you know, bring in the pain. In terms of missing generic lord and heroes, I think that it would really, really be beneficial to Cafe if they had an engineer style lord and hero. Someone that could focus on boosting up your artillery or your different types of weapons and so on. Because Grand Cafe does have a decent amount of firepower. Well, it's still very limited, but you could imagine this to kind of boost them up a little bit more. Even just using some examples, like at the Great Bastion, you would want to have some sort of engineer boosting up all your the firepower, all your artillery pieces, because you're going to be dealing with a lot of enemies attacking you, you might as well have a very solid defense. Let's be honest here, there's a lot of races and factions in the Total War Warhammer series which are in need of an engineer, lord, slash, hero, one or the other, as some of them already have one or the other, and it's just very helpful, really. Again, this is with the whole thing of more variety for the sake of variety, and just different playstyles. Some people will prefer a spellcaster, some people will prefer anything else, really, it just depends. As Li Dao is known as the Lord of the Phoenix, this is now going on to units, well, there is already a unit that we know exists, which is the Vermilion Bird. Unfortunately, we don't know too much about them, but it's very likely that they're very much like phoenixes. Um, I know, I know, not very exciting, However, we know that they're technically in-game as they help keep the balloons up. It would be cool to have a big flying fast creature for Cafe, as they do have flying units, but a phoenix could be cool as a monstrous entity just moving around quite quickly, uh, being able to revive if killed because, you know, phoenixes... Well, we don't know exactly the vermilion birds are going to be very much the same, but the title's there, and it just kind of makes sense. Add in a unit of, say, monkey warriors, we'll talk more about the monkey warriors a bit later, and you could have a skirmishing unit, which would be kind of needed. The fact is, we know that Li Dao and the Monkey King do actually 
try to work together. I wouldn't say get along because, well, you know, this is Warhammer. It's very hard to get along anyway. But, yeah, it would make sense for him to hire monkey warriors to be able to defend his territories. And it might be the case that if he's trying to find Shenzhou, he wants a skirmishing unit that will be able to move fast through terrain, through trees, in an effort to have some extra strength, right? Again, he uses monkey warriors to defend Cafe. This is established law, so why not use monkey warriors for a special mission? Maybe the monkey king is kind of keen on what is going on, and he wants to just hire out some troops in an effort to make sure that Cafe does not fall until he takes it over. You never know. And as Li Dao is known as the Fire Dragon, one would expect fire power, where maybe a Cafe version of the Organ Gun could come in handy to deal with all the Chaos Warriors, obviously all the Chaos Dwarfs, you need some damage being done, right? Very similar to the Organ Gun, I'd say more of the Dwarfs, rather than the Repeater from the actual Empire, though we know that Empire and Cafe kind of have very similar Black Powder weapons, albeit the Cafein ones are supposed to be a tad more sophisticated. It would definitely be helpful if you're fighting loads of Hordes, and again, this is a faction where you're fighting loads of Hordes, there's a lot of units that could be added in. There's a lot of stuff that we know about, like the Crowmen, uh, some Terracotta Warriors and so on. But I imagine those will be more centralized cafe rather than southern. In all honesty, Games Workshop and Creative Assembly could have a lot of fun with this and make like the southern warriors a bit more non-mon style. You know, have some uh, fire dancers in a sense. Just, you know, fire weapons, loads and loads of fire and more tribal style warriors. I think that would be kind of cool as they're obviously close to the Mountains of Heaven. But they'd need to be very skirmish focused. They'd also have to be used to fighting quite stylized, I guess, uh, because you'd be dealing with like the Men, which would be very, very quick. We don't know exactly how the Naga would work, but it can be assumed that they'd be fast moving too. So you'd want some fast moving human warriors, very similar to that of like the Wood Elves, but just turned into human rather than elves, you know? They could do an easy five or six units here if Cafe's book is as large as believed to be, because if they're going to really go ham on Cafe, we expect a large roster too, right? And having different cultures represented as units within Grand Cafe would be kind of cool as it would show off how varied Cafe is as a nation. However, what could also happen is Creative Assembly could go for a completely different way and decide to implement the Monkey King, a character who's shrouded in mystery in his own right. We know he lives in the Mountains of Heaven. We know that he's active. He has a little bit of an issue with Li Dao, who ended up ruling Cafe for a very small amount of time and has an army of monkey warriors at his disposal. They could do this as a sub-race to Cafe, completely different, with its own full army, which is something that we've already seen before, you know, when you play as the Champions of Chaos. If you pick one of the mono-god lords, you can devote completely to one of the gods, right? Like, if you play as Azazel, you can have full Suneshi armies. Village, full Zinjian armies. What if you played as the Monkey King, and you had access to a small amount of warriors of cafe, humans and all that, but the grand majority of your troops were monkey warriors and if you wanted the rest of the cafe factions you'd have to take over the capital. Kind of similar to how Skarsnik works where you have loads of goblins and then you would take over Carrack Eight Peaks to be able to recruit orcs. With the reverse working the same way for normal cafe factions where you would have maybe access to one or two monkey warrior units, but if you want the rest of them, you'd have to go down to the Mountains of Heaven and pacify them to be able to recruit them. Obviously, the Monkey King would have a generic Lord and Hero option with a few different skills to kind of work them around, and you'd still get access to them with Grand Cafe, but you'd have to take over the area. We know that the Mountains of Heaven are kind of textured, you know, it looks like the area is poised for eventual expansion, but I don't know if it's going to be anytime soon. This would be really cool. The only problem is the same issue as Li Dao. The area is kind of centralized and you'd be dealing with the same enemies as everyone else. I don't imagine that the Monkey King would go anywhere else as he's focused on Grand Cafe. 
and we don't know exactly how these stories are going to work. Are all three factions going to be doing with the same story? Are they going to be doing different stories? I guess only time will tell. Out of the two, I think that Li Dao makes the most sense. I think it's too early for the Monkey King. I think that he will eventually come, but it might take a while, and it will be when they eventually decide to open up Ind as a nation, uh, not as a playable faction, but rather just, you know, generic opening, uh, putting some minor factions in there and so on, because that would allow for expansion. Or else, as the Monkey King, you'd be forced to go into Grand Cafe, and you'd be fighting against your own. I don't know how that would work too well. It might just be a bit boring, right? Now some other people might be saying, well, what about Yin Yin, the Sea Dragon, and so on? I think she'll come, but I think it's during the time where the Lizardmen will get their fabled rework, as it would make sense to have a Cathayan invasion of Lustria, to relive that story from Sixth Edition, was it? And finally fix up the Lizardmen, let's be honest there. Ultimately, it is very difficult to come up with speculation with the limited knowledge that we do have for Cafe and Kislev until we get those fabled army books. Uh, it's going to be a while. We know that the Cafe army book is fairly far off for Warhammer the Old World. This was confirmed by the Old World devs themselves. So it's going to be a while. Who knows what happens in the future? Who knows what goodies we'll get? Maybe you guys have some other thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in terms of lords, heroes, units, all that different type of stuff in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. Once we start moving on to Thrones of Decay, this will be a lot easier to talk about uh, because it's so easy to kind of think of units that are going to be potentially there. But with all that being said, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.